YouTube, welcome back to another video. And finally, here we are. My experience, my thoughts, my opinions on the Z Fold 6. I've had this phone for several days now. I know there's a million videos out there. Everybody's reviews and their feelings and everything is out there about this phone. But you are tuned in because you actually care about what I have to say. <laughs> or at least that's what I'm going to assume. So make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. We appreciate your support. Without further ado, the Z Fold 6, we are going to start out with a whole lot of positive things to say. This, they <laughs> Samsung has perfected this form factor. This is the most polished foldable, in my opinion, that they have made to date, which you would expect after six generations, right? This thing feels great in the hand, absolutely phenomenal in the hand. You won't want to put this phone down, especially when you're rocking it naked. <laughs> <laughs> so without a case, without any clothes, this is the device to have right now. Awesome build quality, fantastic hinge. It just feels polished, solid when you open it and you close it. You don't feel like it's going to fall apart eventually. So when they promise seven years of updates... I'm thinking that this phone might at least last about five of those years. And who really keeps their phone past five years? I don't know. You guys can comment below if you are that person. But with all of that, the build quality is absolutely excellent. I love the boxy design. We've talked about that. I love the speaker grills that they made those look different. They're more slotted now instead of ported. And the fact that it folds flat and that hinge is so reduced in the symmetry of this outer display now. They made it a little bit bigger and you can definitely feel the difference. I would say it's passable now as an outer screen in my opinion. You still have your one handed use for those that really love to use that outer display. It's bright, it's vivid. Excellent, excellent job there. On the interior screen, and actually before that, the fingerprint reader is very, very accurate. The crease has been reduced, or it could be the fact that this is a brand new phone and it just takes a while for the crease to start to show even more. But right now, it seems like they, by changing the hinge, they have improved the crease or lack thereof. So overall, the build, excellent. Lighter, thinner, it's just, it's not a whole lot more they could do to this form factor, aside from possibly making it just a large device. I would prefer it to be a little, little bigger, a little bigger display, especially if you plan on using this as an all-in-one device that replaces your tablet, and this is going to be your daily driving phone, my opinion would be to make it a little bit bigger going forward. Now, this thing has a lot of AI features. I don't want to bore you to death. You've probably seen that a million times already. I'll just give you a quick example of some AI stuff. It loves my daughter's pictures, as you guys can kind of see some of the examples that um, from her photos, it in my opinion, came out beautiful because I have a beautiful little girl. So there's one of the uh, sample pictures there. It didn't really care for my face too much. So, so it struggled when trying to recreate or do something fun with my face. I think this is the best or the closest, the most accurate it got to kind of showcasing me a little bit. Um, it loves to add weight, man. It loves to add weight to my face there. I don't know. But, and that was kind of based off this picture here. So that was the best I could get. That one picture, it, it made it seem more like me if 
you guys agree or not. Um, so the AI stuff is is really solid. I've heard a lot of people call it gimmicky. I don't know. I mean, it depends on who you are. If you're an artist, I'm sure you're going to find a lot of great things to do with all that AI stuff. If you take a lot of notes, I think it'll be very beneficial because you can go in there and you can do all sorts of stuff with your notes and just, you know, to your heart's content with the AI features. Like there's a lot that that can be done to the average person and eh, maybe it'll burn out after a couple of weeks. Hard to say. Either way, I'm glad the features are there. Now, whether or not they're going to bring the features to their other devices, I believe they will. Um, I'm hoping that they will because I still have my Fold 4. So bringing those AI features to other devices would be great. And I'm sure they will eventually. Um, battery life. Battery life seems very solid right now. So standby time has always been an issue with a lot of my Samsung devices. Like, for example, my Z Fold 4. Standby uh, battery drain overnight is usually about 11%, which I think is pretty heavy, um, at least in my opinion, my experience. This phone, I found it to drain between 5 to 6%. So that's a huge change from the Fold 4 to this Fold 6 as far as the standby battery drain. So kudos to them for doing that, especially with keeping the 4,400 milliamp hour battery, which... We'll talk about that later. <laughs> but the positive thing is the battery seems really, really solid right now. Um, the speakers are good. They sound uh, nice and full. I don't think they're necessarily changed in this device from the Fold 4 to this Fold 6. But they do sound more full. I wish they had more volume. But... I won't complain about the speakers. The speakers are definitely passable. They're good speakers. Could they have been improved? Yes. Um, I would love for them going forward to maybe do quad speakers. That would be excellent. But I know they may stay away from that because they want to not cannibalize their tab series lineup. So that's probably why they don't really do much with the speakers. But they are good speakers, so don't get me wrong. They are good. Performance with this Snapdragon is very, very good. Um, I haven't run into any issues. The only bug, I guess, if you want to call it a bug that I came across, is my Gmail didn't respond a couple of times in the last few days where I had to like exit out of the app and then go back in. But outside of that, I had no performance issues whatsoever. Tested out my favorite games. Those work great. Even did some uh, PlayStation Remote play on this. Um, that worked out as well as it could, I guess, because <laughs> for some reason, Android and PlayStation uh, Remote play, it's, it's meh, at least in my opinion. I found that my iOS devices work better when I do the remote play. But you guys can comment below if you have that same experience or not. For some reason, I feel like when I use the remote play on an my Android devices, it comes out dark and the sound isn't as great. And there are more glitching, more glitches happen when I'm using Android. But maybe that's just me, just my experience there. Now, so those are really the most positive things I can say about this device is that it is a good, a really, really good device. Um, if you are looking to upgrade from, I would say, a Z Fold 3 or older as far as your devices, this is an excellent upgrade for you. I would not hesitate because those of you probably still, still using Fold 3s at this point, maybe your battery life isn't as great anymore, maybe your hinge is kind of loose now, or you got some peeling on the screen, or... Your performance isn't as good because I believe that was like a Snapdragon 888. So this would be a huge upgrade for you. Now, anybody outside of that, anybody using newer devices like a Fold 4, Fold 5, you may want to reconsider um, 
switching to this device. And there's a few things I guess I want to say about that. And remember, keep in mind, this is just my opinion on this stuff, okay? I can only speak for myself. So don't get angry in the comments based on my experience, all right? There are too many things that are unchanged to really consider upgrading to this device to pay more than $1,000 or whatnot. Um, the cameras are unchanged, so maybe some post-processing might be better. But as far as the hardware, I mean, that under-display camera is still lackluster. The camera's on the back. They look great, you know, so the styling is very nice. But they're unchanged from the last few iterations of this device. And usually what happens with a device is year over year, at least the camera's improved. But Samsung decided to just leave the cameras as, as is. So I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, aside from the cameras, the battery capacity remains unchanged. So even though I said the battery is solid on here, it's still a 4,400 milliamp battery when they could have easily made the battery bigger. They just chose not to. So we get good battery life, but we could have gotten great battery life. There's still no fast charging, so it still takes a long time for this phone to charge up, over an hour to fully charge this phone, which to me, I mean, it's still unchanged. Why haven't they changed that? The price went up, but the features really didn't go up. The hardware really didn't go up. Um, even though I love this new boxy design, absolutely love it. What they did was they changed the design so that your old cases and things won't fit now. So now you need to get new cases, right? So that's a way for them to make more money off the accessories. So they raised the price of the device. They changed the design of the device. So now you have to get new accessories really to fit. At least the old S pens will still work on this. So that's good, I guess. Which kind of brings me to the new, uh, well, newer S pen. There's still nowhere to house this in the device. That is a huge disappointment to me. Um, other people probably don't care about the S Pen. I do. I like to use it. I want Samsung to encourage us to use it. And to me, this is not encouraging us. Okay, yeah, it's a more flat case design for the device, but just put the pen in the device where it belongs. That way, more people will use it. For me, I'm not going to use it this way. This is too much of a hassle to have to use this mechanism to release this pin to be able to use it every time. I just think that's too many steps, especially trying to put it back in place. When, when this case is actually on the phone and you guys can comment below if you have a different experience. But for me, if I want to use my S Pen at night, it's hard to put that pen back in the case without turning a light on to see what I'm doing there. You got to kind of feel around for it to place it back in correctly. You shouldn't have to do all of that. Samsung has the ability to put the S Pen inside the device. I don't care what anybody says. Um, and you still can't use it for the outer display. So I want to be able to take a quick note on the outer display. They've improved the outer display. Why can't they improve it enough where we can use the S Pen on the outer display? That is just so disappointing. And the fact that it's not Bluetooth. I want to be able to hold my device way out if I'm taking a group photo with people and be able to click the button on my S Pen to take pictures like you've been able to do since, oh my God, the Note 3, the Note 4 probably, maybe even the Note 2, I don't even remember at this point. But they all have Bluetooth S Pens. Why is it that we can't have a Bluetooth S Pen? I know you can get the S Pen Pro, but who wants to buy that S Pen Pro and still have nowhere to put it? It's a, a thicker S Pen. It's taller. There's nowhere to put it. So then we end up in the same situation. So those things are very disappointing to me. If you don't care about any of that stuff, and perhaps this is gonna be your first foldable experience, 
I absolutely recommend getting this phone. You will not be disappointed if you are not a tech enthusiast. If you're somebody that really doesn't use all these features like the S Pen and whatnot, you really don't care about Bluetooth and snapping pictures. If you just want a folding device that you can use one-handed conveniently, that feels great in the hand, that has good cameras, good speakers, fantastic build, fantastic screen quality, then this is the device for you. It is a beast of a device. But for me, I'm upset because I know what Samsung is capable of. They know what they're capable of, but they decided to drain more money from us <laughs> early adopters that love the tech they're, they're using this time to really drain us. This is the drainage year, right? They raised the price and they really didn't give us anything new other than a more polished device. Still no charging brick in the box anymore. No buds in the box anymore. No case in the box anymore. They just want you to buy all these extra accessories and pay more for the device. Yeah, it seems cool that you get the trade-ins, but if you really break it down dollar for dollar, they're giving you less for your trade-in. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not because they're increasing the price of the device. They're not giving you a free watch or anything like that anymore. You are paying for these accessories. So that is my final take on this device uh maybe i'll do some comparison videos between this and the fold 4 but i feel like i've beaten a dead horse here with how i really feel about this thing it is a really good device folks don't get me wrong but it's really up to you at the end of the day where you're gonna put your money all right until the next one peace